Hello, um, my name is Alex. I'm one of the head TAs of this class and welcome to the first review of uh, the reoccurring worksheet. So in this series of videos, I'll just be going over the problems in this first reoccurring worksheet. Um, the solutions uh, to this worksheet are posted, but perhaps you want someone such as myself to walk through them and show you how I would do it. Um, and so that's why I'm here making this video. So this is the first question of the first worksheet. So we'll just get started with it. Um, so basically the first question, as you can see, is just giving you a class and it's basically telling you to run some lines of code. And we're basically doing a, a, a what would Java display. We're gonna run these two lines of code and then these, what, seven lines of code thereafter. And you're just supposed to basically write out what would be printed. Um, so before we actually start trying to run the code, let's actually look at the class and kind of understand what is going into the class because you're probably new to Java. Um, so this class basically has three parts to it. The first thing we're gonna see is there are a number of instance variables up here. Then there's a constructor right here. And then there are some methods down here. There are three of them. That's how I would break this class into three parts. So if we look at these more specifically, we see that this is a class bear. Um, and this class, this class that we have on the sheet is basically going to serve as a template for bare objects. So we're going to create objects of type bare from this class. And this is basically the template. This, they're all going to have these same variables that we're representing. So it has three variables, um, num, my num, and name. So the first thing to notice here is that two of these variables are not static, my name and name, which means every instance uh, of a bear that we create is going to have a different my num and name. And one of them is static, just num, which means that every instance is going to share the same um, variable. So to explain this in a bit more detail, all static means, and students have a lot of trouble understanding what static means in this class. Static means that a particular variable belongs to the class itself rather than a specific instance of the class. So to use my earlier analogy, remember this whole thing is basically a template. We're going to be creating bare objects from this template and it's gonna have you know these variables, these methods. Um, these two variables belong to an individual bare object created from the template, right? The template is a master copy. We create bare objects from it. These variables are going to belong to those copies. This variable num belongs to the template itself. So every copy, rather than having its own instance of num, is going to refer to the kind of master uh, global instance of num. I hope that makes some sense. Um, but the basic mantra that you might have to repeat to yourself a bunch of times is all, all static means is it belongs to the class itself, not an instance of the class. And this will become more clear once we actually start uh, going through the rest of this problem here. Okay, uh, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna look a little bit at this constructor and just get a sense of what it's doing. I think this constructor is relatively, hopefully somewhat straightforward with what it's doing. So it basically takes an int n and a string str. And what it's going to do is it's going to assign my num, remember one of the variables that belongs to an instance of the class, to n. It's going to assign name, another one of the variables that belongs to an instance of the class, to stra. So it's just assigning these things to the other things. Um, right? This is very common in the constructor. We're just going to pass those variables and we expect those variables to be stored in a particular instance. The one thing to note is that num, First of all, num is instantiated to zero right out the gate, right in the class, as opposed to the other variables, which notice don't have any instantiation. Um, and it's going to be incremented by one. So if you remember, again, that num here is a static variable. It refers to its global. It belongs to the class, not this is a class. Hopefully, you can kind of see that all this is doing is it's basically keeping track of the number of times we run this constructor and therefore it's keeping track of the number of bare, bare objects we've created, right? Because every time you create a bare object, you're going to have to use this constructor. And every time you use this constructor, you're gonna increment num by one since num starts at zero. Whatever num is represents the number of bears we have created, right? That's what's going on with that. Okay, then the third part, uh, these methods. Notice that one of them is called print num and the two of them are called print info. Um, so this is an instance of what is called overloading because notice we have the same uh, method name 
but it takes in different arguments, right? One takes in a string and one takes in a um, int. So if you're familiar with Python, which you might be, you can't really do this in Python because in Python you don't specify types, right? If something takes, you know, n, you can pass in an int as n, you could pass in a double, you could pass in a string, it doesn't really matter. Maybe the method's not designed to take a string, but you'll just get an error somewhere else. Here, if you were to call this particular print info method on a string, it would run this one. If you were to call this particular uh, print info method and you were to pass in an int, it would call this one. And if you pass in, say, a double, it would just error because there is no method called print info that takes a double, right? So you have to be very explicit here um, about what you do. But it's really nice. Overloading is really, really nice in Java because it allows us to have the same method name, but, but use it for a different functionality, right? Which is something that like Python, for example, might not allow you to do. OK, all of that aside, let's get to the actual meat of the problem, which is basically creating these two objects and then running all these lines of code. So I'm going to basically draw a bit of a modified box and pointer diagram to show you how I would do this. You could try to do this in your head if you want, but I don't recommend it just because you have a lot of variables to keep track of. And particularly with the static stuff, people tend to mess things up. So basically, here's what I'm going to do. First, we're going to create this new bear called bear1. So I'm going to create a little pointer here. I'm just going to call it bear1, and I'm going to point it to a box. This box basically represents the actual object, right? Bear1, it looks like barrel, but bear1 is the name of the object, and this box represents the contents of the object. So what variables does bear1 have? Well, it has a variable called num. That's a variable called my num. It has a variable, oops, that's capital N. It has a variable called name, right? Three variables. Just we're going down the line here because every instance has these three variables. OK, another thing to note, though, is that num here is static, meaning it, that num doesn't belong to bear one. It belongs to the bear class as a whole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically draw up here another thing called class bear. This represents the instance variable that belong to the bear class itself. And I'm just going to label this one num. OK, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little pointer here from num in bear one to num in the like class bear. I know I just drew a lot, but basically all I'm trying to say is that every time you refer to num from bear one, it, you're actually referring to this num, basically. That's why I draw it as a pointer. It's not really a pointer. That's just kind of a way to conceptualize this. And I think this helps it. Uh, this makes it easier to keep track of static variables. OK, so that's the setup. Now that we've done the setup, let's actually run this constructor, right? So this constructor is taking two arguments, for and oski, right? So for is n, and then oski is str, which stands for string, of course. So what are we going to do? Oh, one more thing I forgot. This num is instantiated to 0 by default from up here. OK, so what are we going to do? First thing we're going to do is we're going to increment num by 1. OK, so let's go to bear 1, and let's go to num, and then we see, oh, num is not located in bear 1. It's actually just pointing to num up here. So this is what gets incremented, right? Because it's a static variable. It belongs to the class bear, not the actual instance bear. I know I'm stressing this a lot, but this is really like the reason this problem exists is to help you understand static variables. OK, other than that, things are a little more straightforward. We just assign n, which is 4, to my num. So I'll just put a 4. Oops. Uh, I will just put a 4 right there. And we assign oski, which is str, to name. So I'm just going to put oski here. I'll put it in quotes to make it clear that it's a string. OK, and with that, let me erase these extraneous marks here. That is the entirety of this first line. That's what it does, right? It creates this new bear object, so we created this bear one, which is a pointer to the actual object itself, which is this box. Inside this box is three variables. One is a static variable, so it points up here. And the other two are not static variables, so they're contained within the box itself. Um, another thing to note here is you may have seen box and pointer diagrams where strings do not actually go in the box. They go like outside the box. Uh, and that's technically correct um, because the string itself is actually a reference type. I'm just drawing it inside the box for the sake of convenience. If that means nothing to you, don't worry about it. That's just um, a technicality uh, if you have that question. Great. 
Okay, so now we just create another bear. We're gonna call this one Clark. I don't know why we call it Clark, but we're calling it Clark. I didn't write the worksheet. So we're just gonna do the same process again, basically. So the first thing we're gonna do, gonna create a variable called bear2. It's pointing to a box. This box has three things in it. It has num, it has my num, it has name. Num, remember, is a reference to the num that is in class bear, just like the other one, right? Notice that these two things are pointing at the same thing. And then again, just like before, my num belongs to a specific instance, right? These are instances, so they're going to be different between instances. So we pass in the number two and the number Clark, or in the string Clark. So hopefully you can see, we're just going to do like this, right? We're just going to assign two to be my num, and we're going to assign Clark to be name, right? That's all. Oh, and uh, one thing I forgot, sorry, is this is going to be incremented to two, right? Because remember, we had num equals itself plus one. We're going to say, OK, what's num? This is num. It's a pointer to up here. So then it's going to change this one from one to two, right? So notice, again, that num represents the number of times we've called this constructor overall, which is two. This is really all of the setup of this problem. And now we can get into the part where we actually run these lines of code down here and do the kind of what would Java display. Um, OK, first thing we're going to do is we're going to print out bear2.num. So now that we have everything set up, it's pretty easy to read these numbers off. So bear2.num, bear2 is here, num points up to here. So we just print this number. We just print the number 2. That's what that line prints. Right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to see bear2.num is going to equal itself minus 1. So again, we go to bear2, we go to num, which is really this num up here, and we subtract 1 from it. So now it's just 1. Keep in mind, this is the same num that bear1 is pointing at. So if we called, for example, if we said bear1.num equals itself minus 1, we would do the exact same thing. And if we called bear with an uppercase b, uh, dot num minus one, it would do the exact same thing because they're all pointing to basically this variable, right? There are three ways to get to this variable through the class directly or through any of the instances. Great, that doesn't print anything though. It just changes the number. Um, so now we print bear one dot num. What is bear one dot num? Well, this is actually what I just said. Um, bear one, we go here, we go into num. We see it's pointing up here. It's pointing at one. It was two just a minute ago, but then we changed it. We decremented it to one, and now it's one. Even though we decremented it via a different object, we decremented it via bear two. We printed out from bear one, since it's pointing at the same thing, it's going to be one. Great. Um, so now we are going to do bear two dot my num equals itself minus one. Notice not num, but my num. So we go to bear two, we go to my num. There's no pointer here or anything, so we can just decrement it directly. So we decrement it from two to one. That's all we do right there. OK, now uh, we say print out bear1.myNum. So we go to bear1, we go to my num. We want to print that number out. That number is 4. So it is 4. Notice it is not 3, because when we decrement my num in bear2, it doesn't change bear, bear1's my num, because they're separate instances. Were, this, were my num a static variable, then it might be different, but they're not. So that's why you do this. Now we are going to call some methods. So from bear one, we're going to call print info on the number two. So remember that it's going to choose which method to um, call in the class based off the argument passed in. So we're going to call this method basically, right? Because this is the one that takes a number because we're passing it two. <clears throat> and Java knows it's a two, right? So we're gonna run this method. This method just prints out number colon, just a string plus D, what is D? D is whatever we passed in and we passed in two. So all we're going to do is we're going to print out, I'm running out of space down here, but we're gonna print out number colon two, right? Uh, it doesn't really matter that it came from bear one in this case, we could have done the same thing calling it from bear two, it would have done the same thing, right? Uh, okay, and so now the final line is bear one dot print info apples. So just as before, how we knew to use this method because we passed in an int, now we know to use this method because we're passing in a string. So other than that, it's gonna do the same thing. It's just gonna print out I like plus the string. The string is apples. So we are just going to get I like uh, apples out of that. Okay, 
but that is everything that is going to print. Uh, notice there are no quotes on this. It's just going to print out the, uh, the actual string itself. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything for the first problem. So I hope this is somewhat enlightening or helpful. See you in the next one.